go, 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 let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick, I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Yo, bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most, I tell her those bitches so extra. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me, niggas, they wanna fight, they some bustlers. What would happen if Naruto had the blood of both dominant clans within his series, the Senju and the Uchiha, with these powerful bloodlines running through his body, he could only be destined for greatness. Yo, it's Zero, and this is what if Naruto was half Senju and half Uchiha. This is more of a long series, so I hope you guys enjoy it in each part and help me add on to it. Now, with that out of the way, let's begin our story. I know it may sound cliche, but this video was done so many times by so many different people, and it was all done great, in my opinion, by all the people that I've watched do it. So, of course, I'll have to make mine a little more interesting when taking the story further, but it may be the same for the beginning, so just bear with me. With Naruto here being the descendant of Madara and Hashirama's families, and there's two ways we could take the story with one Minato and Kushina being alive, and one where they remain dead. And I actually want them to remain dead here, because I don't want Minato to be able to end the story too quickly, because he'd still be in his prime. What actually happens after Naruto's birth is Haruzen raises him, and not like in canon. No, you can't even call that raising him. This Naruto is actually taken care of, and even trained, as he's seen as the next, well, the next coming of the White Fang, due to his extraordinary genetics and abilities. This was the first time that we'd actually see a full Senju and Uchiha have a child. So of course the Uchiha wanted to raise him, but Fugaku knew there was no chance with him being the Nine Tails Jinchiriki. So, all the actions of Danzo and the clan still play out the same. And when that does happen, well, most of the clan dies, except for two members. That of course being Naruto, and Sasuke. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't skip over anything that's really important to go over within our story. Now, with Naruto growing up and Haruzen still being an active Kage, he would have Jiraiya and Tsunade return to the village as a major change happens because of this. And this is because of Naruto's bloodline, with Granny Tsunade actually being his real grandmother here. And I think this gives her a reason to actually come back and become the fifth Hokage much earlier in the story, almost right after the clan's massacre or a couple months. Now, with her in charge, Haruzen and Jiraiya can focus on the training of Naruto for the next five years. And I do think this Naruto, due to the stress and expectations that he has to live up to and the harsh training that he would receive, would unlock his one and then two Tomoe Sharingan throughout his childhood. This Naruto also has access to all five chakra natures that are natural. And because of his DNA, he can automatically suppress the Nine Tails thanks to his Senju and Uchiha blood. With that, he's able to become even stronger, as this Naruto doesn't attend the academy at all, as he's trained by Jiraiya, Haruzen, and Tsunade every day without fail. Naruto also learns the Rasengan when he is of age to do so, but he's restricted from using it unless he's about to die or he becomes a Chunin. Speaking of his other training, Naruto learns a lot of Jutsu from his mentor Haruzen as well as many healing techniques from that of Lady Tsunade, and even more bad habits from Jiraiya that he quickly loses once Haruzen and Tsunade scold him. Naruto, though, was still hated throughout the village, but he was hated even more because of the blood that was running within his body, and even more that it was mixed with that of the great Senju bloodline. This Naruto isn't really cocky like you would imagine because of his grandmother being the main one to raise him, He's actually quite shy, the opposite of her, and his personality is very calm and collected. But when he fights, he does become a different person entirely. The night of the graduation soon arrives, and someone does try to steal the scroll of sealing. Although when they walk into the office, they find Naruto sleeping on the desk. This brat again. As he takes a step towards Naruto, he pulls out his blade to kill him. Mizuki is then stabbed by three different Narutos, causing him to fall to his knees bleeding. It's then revealed that he was placed in a genjutsu, as the real Naruto was sitting down while reading the scroll, going through some of its forbidden jutsu. Tsunade then walked in shortly after, asking if he was ready to go, but then seeing the shinobi, completely in shock. Naruto turns him in and then heads home. 
And this is how it will work around him still being on Team 7. As this Team 7 will be the same. And since Naruto has no record at the academy, he's basically looked at as a person with the lowest score. Meaning that he could be put with the Rookie of the Year, Sasuke Uchiha, and with Sakura Haruno. Speaking of Sasuke, this version of him remains the same. And he's a little more empathetic to Naruto because he's also in Uchiha. But he's hated for it, so he feels even worse for Naruto. Team 7 is then seen sitting in the room, as no one speaks except for Sakura, as both of her teammates stayed to themselves and were more quiet. Kakashi walks in, late, noticing that each one of them is a little different. He then takes them to the roof, where they have their iconic talk about their goals and ideals, leading to the bell test which would happen the next morning. Naruto and Sasuke both sit in silence but come up with a strategy to take him down, and take him head on with everything that they have. Naruto tells Sasuke to lead and he'll back him up, and the Uchiha prodigy would agree of course, since at this point he'd believe that he's much stronger than Naruto. When attacking their sensei, Kakashi blocks and evades most of their strikes, until clones of Naruto begin to cover Sasuke's weak points. The young Uchiha's then work together well, especially since Naruto is able to read most of Sasuke's movements and cover them. Still, this wouldn't be enough to take down a Jonin, especially Kakashi Hatake. Jiraiya and Haruzen watched on from a distance at their final student, with Haruzen stating that the boy is quite shy even when fighting, as if he wanted to he could have taken the lead, but this is when they see it. Each one of Naruto's clones surrounding Kakashi then uses a different nature transformation. Their sensei then has to use a substitution and captures Naruto, but this one was of course a clone. And, from the side, Sakura jumped out to grab the bells, with Sasuke aiming to stab him. He then uses lightning release to paralyze both of them, and Naruto then jumps in the way defending them. Kakashi would state that the test is now over, since they worked together really well, but Naruto wasn't done. He pulls out a kunai and gets ready to fight, but then he calms himself down, remembering that all they needed to do for now was to pass, as he must become a jonin, so... He has to become a Chunin first, and even before that, he has to be accepted as a Ginin before his sensei. So, naturally, he allows it. Team 7 now, after being healed by Naruto, begins their missions around the leaf, and Naruto doesn't complain at all. He's become a Ginin, and he knows the work that he needs to do to become a Chunin, as it won't be easy, especially for him, as he knows a bunch of people in the leaf are already doubting him. Here, it would be Tsunade who insists to Haruzen that Naruto and his team were ready for a more difficult mission, as this is where the bridge builder arc would begin. Tazuna then makes his comments to them about their strength, but Tsunade vouches for her grandson, saying that this is their best ginning team available, as it also has a medic, that being Naruto. This calms them down a little, but then they set out, where they would first be attacked by the Demon Mist brothers. They first kill Kakashi leading to Naruto and Sasuke both taking on their own opponent. This battle is short-lived though, as it isn't even a contest due to their pure strength and teamwork. Sasuke knocks out his opponent, while Naruto killed off his own. Then he could be seen walking over to do the same to the other brother, but Kakashi reappears stopping him. Let's do an interrogation first. Kakashi lifts his headband, showing off his Sharingan, as when he wakes up, he gets the info that he wants due to the small genjutsu he was placed in. Now, with Tazuna's true motives being revealed, the team has to make the decision, and they choose to keep going, especially Naruto. Once entering the Land of Waves, Team 7 is again confronted by another rogue shinobi, this time with it being Zabuza of the Mist. He begins his battle with Kakashi, leading him to being trapped inside the water prison jutsu. But we also have Naruto and Sasuke already rushing in before Zabuza can even get a chance to make a clone. Because the two of them attack so suddenly, Naruto had actually moved so fast that he got right behind Zabuza, cutting off one of his arms which frees his sensei. And this puts Team 7 at a huge advantage, meaning that Haku would have to jump in early, not only to save Zabuza, but to mask their immediate escape with ice release. With this, Naruto wonders what they should do, but Kakashi falls to one knee being caught by Sasuke. This is when Naruto takes the lead in the mission, following Tazuna to his home, where he could then heal Kakashi. After seeing his healing firsthand, Tazuna's expression would change, 
realizing that this brat could actually be their savior. As Naruto wasn't even a brat, he just called him that. Naruto then is tasked with going throughout the land of waves to heal everyone who is already injured. Naruto had agreed as this was a secret mission given to him by Tsunade in the first place, as he's on a road to becoming a Jonin. But he has many things that he must do, and this is one of the checkboxes. Naruto agreed, and he headed out using the multi-shadow clone jutsu to send out a bunch of clones, as they could do this. However, by the time he was done, he was actually completely exhausted and decided to rest. This actually led to Naruto falling asleep for a day while Team 7 trained in the forest to learn how to walk on trees and on water. But Naruto would already know this, so he wouldn't be missing anything important. While asleep, Naruto was having a dream where he could see something strange. It was a dark forest surrounding him, and then the branches began to manifest around his body, holding him still to where he couldn't move. They then began strangling Naruto, as he would instantly wake up in a cold sweat, hearing the screams of Tazuna's family. He then runs out to see the younger mother and son being attacked. Naruto then takes down the two bandits with clones and heads out of the house. However, this is where Gato's original plan was completely changed, as he had his men rampage the land of waves, while Haku and Zabuza head to the bridge. Naruto would have to send out hundreds of clones throughout the small town to protect the people and their homes. This all leads to him making it to the bridge very late, to where Sasuke was already pretty injured and Kakashi was having trouble dealing with Haku's ice clone and Zabuza, who had an ice arm instead. Naruto would actually run right by him, heading to Sasuke, who was just barely standing. Just in time, he makes it to block some of the needles with lightning release. Naruto then looks around using a Sharingan to see through it, but he can't. There are too many mirrors, which causes him to hold out one hand, thinking about using the Rasengan. As he begins to form it, he stops. Instead, he just makes a clone that heals Sasuke as fast as possible while he protects them. Now the duo could fight again, but with the mirrors being so unpredictable, Haku was a dangerous threat here. And with the clone of Haku actually heading towards Tazuna and Sakura, Naruto needed to act quickly, and so did Kakashi. But what could he do? Time was running out, and he needed to do something quickly. This caused immense stress on Naruto because the thought of his friends dying because he isn't strong enough causes another awakening within him. Naruto actually yells out as two awakenings would happen, stretching out his hands, making wood release appear, stabbing through the real Haku and every one of the mirrors around him, destroying the other clone, giving Kakashi the opportunity to also kill Zabuza, as we would look into Naruto's eyes to also see the three Tomoe Sharingan with him breathing heavily. Naruto then makes the wood release go away as the branches kind of disappear in a way. This is also when Gato and the rest of his men would arrive, but Naruto wasn't having any of it. Still in a blind and almost rage-like state, he holds out his hands towards them, making trees burst from the ground and slam them off the bridge into the water. This is when he shoots a lightning arrow to electrocute them finishing off the job. Now the bridge could be finished, and with Naruto having the multi-shadow clone jutsu and wood release here, it would happen even faster, which would lead to our team then heading back to the Leaf Village, where they would discover that many shinobi from other villages were here as well, as Team 7 soon gets word of the tuning exams from Lady Tsunade. The team walks through the village after signing up for the tuning exams and they run into Konohamaru, who I haven't talked much about, but him and Naruto are like brothers here. So when seeing him be grabbed by Kankuro, Naruto appears next to him, kicking him away. Kankuro then gets ready for a fight, and so does Tamari. But Gara then stops them. He walks towards Naruto, holding his hand to his chest. With this hand, I could kill you now. Naruto then shows his eyes to him. But with these eyes... You won't even get a chance. Gar then wakes up from the Genjutsu, turning around to see only Kankuro and Tamari standing there. He twists and turns, wondering where he went, but then he scoffs, realizing that he was put into a Genjutsu, and soon the exams will begin. On the first day of the test, Team 7 immediately finds the testing room and doesn't run into Rock Lee at all. 
As during the first test, Naruto and Sasuke both use their Keke Genkai to pass. The main portion of the test is then finally here, as the force of death and the preliminary matches is what we all truly care about. As now, Anko appears greeting all the Ginning and taking them to the force of death, where she actually chooses Kiba to scare since Naruto is paying attention. But both Naruto and Sasuke get an odd feeling from a certain shinobi who was also in attendance. And, once they were given their scroll, they headed into the force of death where Naruto decided to send out clones that track down different teams. Throughout the wait time, most of the clones find the teams that have the same scroll as them, but then, they were attacked by a grass team. Naruto and Sasuke would cover Sakura before hiding behind a large tree. Sakura then asked if they were surrounded, and Naruto nodded. It'll be okay. I don't think they realize that this is truly my element. Naruto then uses wood release to grab each of the grass shinobi and capture them. Sasuke then calls that ability super useful as they would then head towards them, grabbing the scroll, realizing it was the one that they needed, as Sakura stated that they could be the first ones to the tower. Then they began to head out of the force of death, but Naruto could see a large snake chasing after them, so he tells Sasuke to turn around, and the two would sink a fireball jutsu to burn down trees to make it fall in the snake's path, actually crushing it. But, as they land on another branch, they see Sakura being held by her throat as she struggles to then breathe, but smiles. The pale woman is shocked as the girl turns into cherry blossoms that were left in her place. Then from the side, Sakura punches her into a tree, which actually cracks it. This is where it's revealed that Tsunade also took her on as another student. And I wanted to do this because I wanted Sakura to be more important earlier on in the story. As Naruto and Sasuke both activate their Sharingan and now prepare to take on this new foe. Sasuke asks what's the plan, and Naruto says, don't hold back at all, as he runs in, using an Earth-style Jutsu and then a Lightning-style Whip. Of course, Orochimaru avoids it, only to be hit by the explosive kunai of Sasuke. Orochimaru is able to heal and counter some of their attacks, but with Naruto having access to Wither Release and the Sharingan, he can combo with his teammates over and over again, leading to Orochimaru being forced to retreat, only for the moment as he actually does change his mind about who he wants to place the curse mark on. He'd rather now take over Naruto's body. And with that out of the way, the team is able to make it right to the tower after. The Sand Sibling team, as they were the second team. Now, they had to wait on the rest of the contestants before the preliminaries would be announced. Naruto is actually able to see Jiraiya, where he states that they may have fought Orochimaru. Hearing this, Jiraiya stayed in the leaf and actually stayed in high alert with his Jonin squad and his research team. The preliminary matches would remain the same with changes to Team 7's matches only. Sakura completely obliterates Ino in their battle with a single stomach punch. And Naruto and Kiba, well, Kiba can't even touch Naruto and this is without the Sharingan. So you can imagine how easy it is for him once he actually begins to try. With all the students, or with all his students passing, Kakashi has to find a way for them all to train. Well, Naruto actually goes away, as he'll be training with Haruzen. And as for the other two, Kakashi decides to train both Sakura and Sasuke. As Sakura wouldn't be able to train with the Hokage due to her wanting her not wanting to show favoritism to her. So she'll be training with her sensei. In the time that Naruto is away for the entire month, he learns a lot from his great-grandfather, since Haruzen was actually alive to see the first and second Hokage. Naruto? Well, he knows what Naruto could be capable of if trained properly. When Naruto returns to fight Neji, the arena was packed, especially with those who believed this is where Naruto would lose. Neji, of course, believes in his own Kekagenkai, as well as his own destiny, but Naruto doesn't listen to any of that. This was a battle of the ages, not only the Uchiha versus the Hyuga, but the Senju. Neji gets in his stance, but Naruto then quickly appears on his side with his speed. He's fast. Neji then dodges and goes for a counter, but Naruto grabs his hand and throws him over his shoulder to the side. Since when was he even this strong? From behind Neji, Naruto then sweeps his legs, then 
a clone punches him, sending him flying again. Naruto then looks to the sands to see Sakura and Sasuke also arriving during his battle, and he holds up his hand. Why bother doing this any longer? Naruto then closes his eyes, rushing in. Neji here is able to close some of his chakra points, but Naruto also does the same, copying his movements with his Sharingan. The two would stay in a close quarter fight until almost all of their chakra points were closed. Naruto then jumps back smiling, and as he does, he holds both of his hands together doing a hand sign. They want me to be a monster so bad. Then I will be. Hey Fox, wake the hell up. Naruto is then shown in front of the nine tails. What do you want, boy? You know what I came here for. Lend me the power to defeat my foes and I'll grant you what you wish for. The beast would snarl, saying that that's impossible. But Naruto would begin laughing, stating that the freedom of the beast and the death of the one who tormented him the most is possible. Kurama then ponders this and decides to see what the boy is really about, giving him a small amount of power. As Naruto smiles and the small orange chakra forms around his body, as the people would then begin to stand in shock and horror. Haruzen, while watching, scoffs. That brat is just as cocky as his mentor. Jiraiya then smiles, asking how this was possible, and Haruzen recalls their training, remembering at the end of one of their days, he was able to tap into that chakra that was not his own. This was strange, as it had never happened before. It's almost as if the beast within Naruto had something to prove to the world through him. With this boost in power, Naruto rushes back in to attack Neji, completely outclassing him in every strike, eventually knocking him out with a kick to the neck. This strike sent him into the wall where he would be unconscious. The villagers, instead of applauding, sit in fear. Not only was the boy able to control the Sharingan, but also the power of the Nine Tails. The entire arena was silent, as this shocked Naruto's teammates who didn't understand. With Naruto seeing their reaction, he looked to Haruzen and then to Tsunade. Their faces were that of sadness for the boy. Naruto then scoffed, saying, Don't feel bad for me. This is the path that I have chosen. A lonely road it will be, but I'm ready. With Sasuke being on time, he could fight Gara here, and this is where the attack on Konoha would happen. Sasuke doesn't care to chase Gara, instead he regroups with Sakura and Naruto. They ask Kakashi what they should do, but their sensei sends them into the village to help with the protection of the Leafs people. This is where we see the duo of Mike Guy and Kakashi head towards Gara to take him down. With Naruto and his team being in the heart of the village, he sees the Battle of the Sanin, with Jiraiya and Haruzen being there to back up Tsunade. Naruto sends clones throughout the village, and he's then ambushed by some grass shinobi. They try to capture Naruto, but of course Team 7 is able to defend their teammate. A loud roar is then heard throughout the village as Naruto turns to see Gara, who had transformed into Shukaku. Damn it. I had a feeling that this would happen. Naruto then heads that way with his team, arriving to see a Kakashi injured with Mike Guy already in the third gate. They could finish this battle. So, Naruto heals them, so they could do so. Naruto then shows off the real fruits of his training, summoning the legendary wood golem of the first Hokage. The three then stand on it as it begins to run at Shukaku, and Naruto dodges the sand and then summons a wooden dragon that wraps around the one tails. This gives Kakashi and Mike Guy the chance to reach Gara and finish off this crazy battle. With the defeat of Shukaku and the death of Orochimaru, the Konoha Crush then comes to an end. Once everything truly calms down, the Leaf Village, well, those who were Ginin, who were important to the battle were promoted to Chunin. Now, we have to decide where to take things from here. The villagers begin to believe that Naruto shouldn't become a Chunin due to Mike Guy and Kakashi being the ones to defeat Shukaku. They also don't like the fact that the fifth Hokage allows Naruto to do as he pleases within the village without having someone watch him. Donzo was able to continue manipulating the villagers to directly hate Naruto, which affects everything. On a later date, Naruto is summoned to the office of Tsunade, but before she could even speak, he had walked in with a dark outfit, a hood on his head, and a bag on his back. Since I'm already a Chunin, 
I'll be heading out to finish what was started here. She asked what he meant, and Naruto stated he plans to hunt down Orochimaru's apprentice in his lab. He wants there to be no chance of his return at all. She wonders if this will be good, so she sends Jiraiya with Naruto, and the two depart the leaf days later. But the clone that was with Jiraiya then poofs into smoke, as we see the real Naruto standing upon a cliff. Sorry, Sensei, but this is where our paths become distant. Naruto then looks at the horizon, asking the fox if he was ready for what's ahead, as the beast snarls, telling Naruto to hurry up before someone catches up to him. Naruto begins to chuckle, sliding down the hill into the forest that was below to begin his own journey. During the time skip, we get to watch Naruto grow up into his own person through his journey. It's a long and tough road laid ahead of our protagonist, but he gets through it day by day without fail. As during the time skip, he masters a multitude of jutsu and abilities and completes missions that he sets out for himself. As while this went on, the leaf was sort of in a panic as they had just learned of the Akatsuki and their goal, but had no idea where their own Jinchiriki was at. As for Naruto, he was seen in a black hood years later, walking into the village. The guards at the gate would try to stop him, but he vanishes, appearing on top of the Hokage stone faces. He overlooks his home while smiling. So much hasn't changed after all. Naruto jumps down, heading to the Hokage building. And while Tsunade was doing paperwork, on Team 7's last mission, they see him leaning on the window outside. Naruto smiles, opening it and hugging Tsunade, who throws him back out of the window into the streets below. Naruto reappears in the room, telling her that that was mean, but she hits him on the head, scolding him for his actions, as he's had no communication with the Leaf in these last couple of years. He would then laugh it off and throw something to her desk. It's... A ripped Akatsuki robe. Wait, you encountered them? Yeah, and I dealt with them. She nods slowly, asking Naruto how strong does he think he's gotten since being away because Sasuke has become one of their top jonin under Kakashi. Naruto looks to everyone in the room and sits down. I could beat all of you without fail. Sasuke asks Naruto to test his theory but he exploded in QB Chakra, as well as the Sharingan appearing. Naruto then calms down, and then moves his headband, showing Tsunade that he mastered the Hundred Seals as well. Jiraiya says that this is impressive, but he's gone on to master Sage Mode in Naruto's absence, so he believes he can still stop Naruto if need be. Naruto then explains on his journey how he's come across many different places, and a distant place that had called to him. This is also where he mastered a different form of sage mode. Naruto then stands up, saying that this threat can be dealt with easily if they act quickly, but that means alerting the other villagers. Naruto states that he's heading to the sand first to let Gara know of this threat. Tsunade sends only Naruto and Tamari, who was already in the village, as now once they make it to the sand, they are able to tell Gara of the threat, and he understands as a Jinchuriki and a Kage that he's a major target. While thinking of what they should do and what they should do next, they have to make a plan for defense. But it was already too late, as days later, Daedara and Sasori invaded the village. When seeing and hearing the explosions, Naruto and Gara act quickly. Gara covers the entire village in sand, making a sand-like dome, while Naruto reinforced it with wood release on top of it. The two would smile, knowing that this, well, this will protect them for a while, and it allowed the Sand Shinobi to evacuate their citizens to a safer location. Daedara and Sasori sat on top of the dome wondering how strong it is and when they could break it. And where did this tree come from? There's no water here. Suddenly, one of the branches then stabs right through his heart. Daedara coughs up blood, looking behind him to see a Naruto would release clone. God damn it. Daedara then leaves it all to Sasori, performing one of his biggest explosions that actually cracks the sand dome a lot and opens up a space, but is quickly reinforced by Naruto's wood release. Naruto would then appear right behind Sasori, stabbing him as well with his hand, and then wood release explodes, tearing his body apart. This is when the other puppets would appear. So, 
this is how it's going to be. Well then, let's get started. All you get to see is Naruto's pupils go into a slit. And then the next thing that he's, well, the next thing that Gara would see, once letting the dome down, is all the dead bodies of the puppets falling down and Deidara's body falling as well, or what was left of it. He thanks Naruto for protecting his home, and Naruto nods. With that, he decides to send a clone back to the Leaf and to every other village to warn them as he goes on his journey once again. You see, because Naruto was isolated due to Donzo's actions, he's become more of a solo shinobi who doesn't really trust those around him. Not yet, at least. Naruto's clones actually encounter Kisame and Itachi, well, their clones, who tell them where to meet up with Sasuke. And the two Akatsuki members that Naruto had dealt with during the time skip were Hidon and Kakazu, so the land of fire was safe for now. Jiraiya still does leave in order to find out more about Pain, their leader. And with that, this is where Jiraiya would still lose his life. And I know that we all would want him to survive, but the shock of fighting six opponents, especially being caught by surprise and without one arm, would be too much for him. And with that, Naruto was away from the village and him, so he had no idea where he was, as the only thing he was worried about was the two tails in Cherokee because he had made it near the land of lightning. With that, his clone, well, would still have one in the leaf village, and it would go up in smoke, relating or relaying the memories to Naruto, who was still in the cloud. He then falls to the ground crying, realizing his master's death, as Killer B and the Rakage would try to help Naruto up, but he can't be talked to. He stands up, vanishing from the room, as he now appears in the Hokage's office. Who did it? Not now, Naruto. We're just as upset as you are. No. Tell me who killed him. Tsunade sits in silence, and then Fukusaku tells Naruto that Jiraiya boy was killed by the leader of the Akatsuki. Naruto then slams his fist into the wall, asking one final question. Who allowed him to leave without taking me with him? Sakura tries to get Naruto to calm down, but he tells her to shut up and back away. Everyone stayed silent for a moment, and Tsunade said that she didn't stop him from leaving, and Naruto looked at her with betrayal on his face. This is when Naruto leaves the room, going to the stone faces once again, as he sits on top of his father's head while crying. All the memories of Jiraiya flood his mind while looking out towards the horizon. Sadness. And then rage fills his body. This is where his own Mangekyo Sharingan would awaken. And with his genetics. It's sort of a pseudo EMS. It's obviously not the same, but he won't go blind or have a mint strain when using it. With his pattern being, let's say, a swirl with black markings extended all the way out, kind of like the thumbnail. The feeling it gives Naruto is intense, and he decides to leave the village once again. No one would know this until the Yamanaka clan alerted the Hokage. They simply would let Naruto go because they can't stop him, but they do wonder where he would go. As now some time does pass, before the Leaf Village is attacked by the Paths of Pain, but as the destruction is about to occur, Naruto reappeared in a modern battle armor from the Warring States period. As his hair swayed in the wind, his grandmother was reminded of Hashirama. Naruto looks across, seeing the diva path, asking if he really wants to continue this battle. You do not understand true misery Naruto sent you, but I, I will show you true pain. He lifts his hands in order to use the almighty push, but Naruto grabs his face and the two go flying away from the village as a diva path is thrown through a large tree and looks up to see Naruto with his eyes glowing. Another path then appears striking at Naruto only for a blue glow to then stop it. The other paths would appear wondering what they should do, but they go all out against Naruto trying to capture the Nine Tails. Meanwhile, back in the village, Tsunade sends out Jonin, well, a Jonin team to support Naruto, but Sasuke was already heading towards him. The crazy thing is that once he arrived, all he could see were the paths of pain killing each other. It didn't make sense to him at all. This is when Naruto finished off the diva path, crushing his head below his feet, 
as he then turned back to the other remaining paths, releasing the genjutsu so that they could see him once again. When looking at Naruto, nothing had made sense to them. But, seeing as how much damage they had already taken, Naruto spoke no words, rushing in and placing his hands on the two paths that were left. This one is for you, pervy sage. Naruto's hands glow, an explosion of chakra would then go off right after. Seeing this power and wanting it for his own, Sasuke would scoff. But then, Naruto turns his head towards him, as he would see the Mangekyo Sharingan of Naruto Senju. Naruto now jumps into the air and begins to float with the use of his Mangekyo ability. There you are. He then vanishes in an instant, bursting into the hideout of Nagato and Konon. Naruto doesn't care for any type of conversation, only asking one simple question. Where is Madara Uchiha? With Nagato giving no answer, Naruto walks towards him, completely obliterating him with his own chakra explosion. And with that, Naruto returns to the leaf, being celebrated, but he ignores it all, as he would later be promoted as a Jonin. But, Tsunade wanted to know what happened during that battle. Naruto stated nothing, only that Pain was dead, as now they could hunt down the real leader. But, before any of that, it seemed that another mission was at hand. Hunting down Itachi Uchiha. So Sasuke would head out with Sakura, while Naruto decided to stay in the village, just in case anything else were to happen. And, with all the other villages and Jinchuriki already being warned, no tail beast had been captured just yet. When departing the village, Sasuke and Sakura meet up with Naruto, who looks them in the eyes, wishing them luck on their journey. Sasuke says they'll be back before he knows it, and before Naruto even finds Madara. Naruto would smile, as the two would leave the village. As on his journey, he finds clues that would eventually lead him to Kisame. With Kisame not allowing Sakura to pass through, it was up to Sasuke to defeat his brother. Their battle would be even closer here due to the secret training that Donzo had done with Sasuke during the time skip. No one had known about it, but the two of them? Well, this training had proved to be useful for Sasuke, as he was able to master a multitude of jutsu and techniques that improved his skills over and over again. With the Battle of Brothers happening, we would pan over to Kisame, dead on the ground with a crater around him, as Sakura stood over him with blood on her hands, smiling. Now, I can go help Sasuke. As the masked man would see this, he sighed. Kisame was a useful ally, but now wasn't the time to worry about that. Since he couldn't find the body of Nagato or Konan, he needed Sasuke to be an ally. Rain would begin to fall on the battlefield, but... When arriving to it, the masked man could already see Sakura healing a passed out Sasuke. Well, that'll just be one more body we'll have to add. The masked man uses Kamui to appear next to Sakura and goes to strike her. He pierces her body against a rock with a blade, saying no hard feelings, but then Sakura speaks from behind him. Yeah, I thought you'd appear here. Madara turns back to see Sakura standing behind him, looking back at the wall to see Kisame's body stabbed. Sakura then holds up her hand, sending Madara flying through the rocks. Since, when was this possible for her to do that? As he looks up, he doesn't see Sakura. Instead, he sees Naruto. I've been waiting for this for quite some time now. This is where I feel it would be good to go over the abilities or the abilities of Naruto's Mangekyo Sharingan as his right eye, has immense control, as he can control the pure chakra within his body, utilizing it to a minimum or maximizing its output. This eye also lets Naruto harness his chakra into the physical world without hand signs to create an insane defense. As his left eye is Suigetsu, a genjutsu that takes control over its target's senses completely. Once it's activated, it remains on a target until Naruto removes it. As with all of this, Naruto looks towards his opponent, and orange chakra flares up around his body. You ready, Kurama? Naruto then rushes in towards Madara, only to go right through him. However, wooden spikes come through the ground, stabbing into his foot. Madara then jumps to a tree branch, looking down at Naruto, who is gone, 
as now a hand was through his chest. Obito then retreats to the Kamui dimension and begins to think of a new plan, but this is when Naruto teleports in using the flying Raijin. You know, this is where it's truly going to end. I don't plan to drag out this fight simply because you've killed my father, but I think someone else wants you to suffer. Naruto now holds up a blade showing off a four-tailed state. This should be just enough to end our battle, don't you think, Madara? With the masked man trying to figure out how to avoid Naruto's next attack, he was already right in front of him. As he put a hand on his shoulder, don't act like you can dodge it. You can't even sense it coming. The power that I've gained is beyond your imagination. The masked man goes to jump away, but his eye is ripped out, trapping him inside the dimension. Well, I'm done here. You can handle the rest, Kurama. Naruto switches places with the beast. And when he wakes back up, there were no remains of the man's body, only the mask. Naruto picks it up and teleports back to Sasuke, seeing him wake up to his brother just barely being alive. Naruto watches Itachi speak his final words to his younger brother, telling him of what Donzo had truly done and what truly happened within the village. With both of them hearing this, Sasuke would also unlock his Mangekyo Sharingan, turning around to see Naruto, asking what they should do. Sasuke was so confused in this moment. Impressionable. Naruto only held out his hand, asking if Sasuke wished to change the world with him. He helped him up, and the two would take the body of Itachi back to the Leaf Village. Arriving weeks later at night, the two would sneak in, using Naruto's ability to coat themselves in chakra to block out the Yamanaka detection. Making it towards the Anbu headquarters, they snuck around, ambushing two guards and taking their outfits. Donzo sat in his office, wondering when Sasuke would return from his mission to get more training. If he can get that Uchiha under his control, he could kill the Hokage and take control of this village. A knock on the door is then heard as two Anbu walk into the room. Lord Donzo, we've spotted Sakura and Sasuke entering the village once again. Donzo nods, saying that they should go to greet Sasuke, but Donzo turns around, and then Naruto cuts off both of his arms. Sasuke would stab a kunai into Shisui's eye. This is where it ends, Donzo. No more of your treason. Sasuke looks down at him with his EMS, and with the memories of his family flooding in, tears would fall from his eyes. All of it, all of it was taken away because of you. You don't deserve an easy death. Rotten hell. Amaterasu. Flame control. The black flames would appear burning Donzo until nothing was left of him. Now, with him dead, Naruto and Sasuke turned back to the base of the Anbu. And they would decide to kill every member in the facility. As when morning rose, they returned to the Hokage, telling her that they wished to attend the Kage Summit as her guards. She would nod, and a week later, the three of them were seen in the room with all the other Kage and their own respective guards. The first topic of discussion was that of the Akatsuki. There were no remaining members alive, so there could potentially be peace among the villages. However, Naruto and Sasuke told the other Kage to remain silent. Naruto then begins to speak. Because of the old ways, many powerful clans have been lost to time, as they were either hunted down or slowly thinned out. And because of that, because of your ideals that you have in place, Jinchiriki like myself are seen less than human, bottomless, creatures just to be used. And with this system that you all have still in place, well, because it's still in power, we'll have to change a system like that if you truly do want peace. Anoki, the Suchikage, asked what Naruto was suggesting. Tsunade then looked to Naruto, asking if he was sure about this, and Naruto nodded. He then sat silent for a moment, closing his eyes, opening them, standing straight back up in front of all the Kage, with his hands up. I'm asking all of you to step down as Kage and elect a new one to replace you. As of now, and as you are now, you can't visualize a new world for our shinobi to live peacefully. So step down 
and let the next generation take charge. Whether you believe we're ready or not, it's what has to be done. The room was silent until the Rai Kage asked what would happen if they refused this offer. Naruto then turned on his Keke Genkai and stood at the head of the table, slamming his sword into it, shaking the room. Well, I guess it's another war on our hands because I'm not taking no for an answer. So, who sides with me? Everyone was silent, but Gara stood up first, siding with the Leaf Village and Naruto, but the rest of the Kage would refuse. Naruto looks to Tsunade, who stands up, wishing the other Kage luck, as the Leaf and the Sand would leave this meeting. As she says on her way out, that they will show no mercy at all. The fourth great Shinobi War was declared on this date with the leaf and sand against all other nations. Naruto didn't care if this was the right path or not. All he cared about was creating a new world for the future generation. But he could tell that Tsunade was a soft leader. So through this war, he knew he had to prove himself if he wanted to become the sixth Hokage. The leaf meets with their elected generals for the war and begin strategizing on what they should do first. With the head of the Nara clan, Shukaku, advising their forces to first cut off the stone from the cloud. Doing this isolates all the other nations because the mist was already on an island, isolated. With the mist far apart, the sand could gatekeep them away from the other villages with their reinforcements. Hearing this, Naruto brings up the problem of their Jinchuriki. And he states that he'll handle them, so don't worry about that. So, the Leaf and Sand begin their first plan of attack, which was actually defense. Naruto sends a clone that heads to the port of the Mist Village with the Sand and their own shinobi. No ships could get through. As well as in the water, Naruto created giant wooden spikes that would rip through any ships if they tried to cross over. While monitoring the docks, days later, the three tails Jinchuriki could be seen standing on the water with hundreds of shinobi behind him. Naruto's clone goes up in smoke, and the real Naruto appears using the flying Raijin moments later, as he would be smiling. The three tails, huh? Naruto looked up, turning back to Gara. Gara, tell your men to stand down. I'll handle this on my own. Naruto, are you sure? Naruto nods, pulling out his blade and activating a Sharingan. Yeah, it'll be just fine. Naruto steps onto the water feeling a little amused. Kurama warns him of the Three Tails' ability to manipulate the ground, well, the water itself, but Naruto laughs. I just need to get close to Yagura and it's over. Naruto lifts his head, asking once more if they truly wish to do this and the Mist Village doesn't have to suffer. Yagura doesn't, well, he does speak, pointing towards Naruto. And his fleet of shinobi move in towards the Nine-Tailed Jinchuriki. Naruto would sigh, rushing him with chakra flowing around his body. As the first kunai can't even make contact with them, he then blitz the first wave of shinobi with his base speed alone, ripping through them as if they were actually there. This is when more of the Jonin in the battle would join in, contesting Naruto a little bit. With Jutsu, that would force him to avoid. Tamari asked Gara if he was sure about letting Naruto fight on his own, but Gara shook his head. I guess we'd just be in his way. He has something up his sleeve. And the reason he's fighting like this is to minimize the deaths in our village. He's taking on the burden on himself. Tamari calls that pretty noble and tells turning to see Naruto's sadistic face while fighting. Or maybe he's just crazy. Yagura then lands a punch on Naruto that sends him flying down into the water. Naruto teleports back to the surface, cutting him across the back with his blade. Don't make this any harder than it needs to be. As Naruto pointed his blade, he noticed that he was completely surrounded. Alright, let's finish this. He used the multi shadow clone jutsu to even out the numbers, causing Yagura to transform into the three tails and to begin attacking the clones. As he smashes them like ants, using tail beast bombs to destroy Naruto's wooden golems when he creates them, and other creations that he tries. With Naruto now looking up, asking for mercy, Yagura was conf confused. 
This wasn't like him at all. Gara and his shinobi looked on in amazement and a little bit of fear. So this is the true power of the Sharingan. Quite scary indeed. Yagura looked down once again, now seeing his own men killed by his hands. What? What have I done? Naruto then sits behind him on the head of the tail beast yawning. No. What did you make me do? Yaku returns around only to be wrapped in a wooden seal, as his tail beast was constricted by wooden dragons. With neither of them being able to move, Naruto says goodbye to his fellow Jinchuriki, killing him and setting his well tail beast free as it was dispersed. With that out of the way, Naruto now walks back to Gara, creating a clone that goes with his forces to invade the mist and finish the takeover. Kill their Kage and show those who are against us no mercy. Meanwhile, this was going on. Killer B and the Raikage were trying to get a hold of the Mizukage, but there was no luck at all. This is when a strange voice was heard. It's too late. Naruto has already taken over the mist as of today. The white Zetsu appears, telling the Raikage that he stands no chance without some help. This is when a deal was made between the two. The Leaf would later get word that one of their teams had been ambushed and a prisoner was taken, with that being Yamato. At a meeting, Tsunade and her strategists were trying to figure out why he was taken, but then Sasuke entered as he throws some scrolls to the table, sighing. This is from me and Kakashi's Anbu squad. One of our members had been scouting the cloud, and this is the intel he gained before he died, revealing that the cloud was using Yamato to create a wooden army. With the leaf, well, with that information, the leaf would have to make a decision soon to attack the cloud or the stone. With all knowledge that they have, they put all their efforts into the first attack on the cloud. Sasuke, Kakashi, and Mike Guy will lead a separate attack on the stone. Naruto prepares himself, and he begins to head towards the cloud with his own militia, just to scout at first. They follow his command and travel slowly into the land of lightning. Once entering, the white Zetsu would be on guard, but they kill them with ease. Now with them getting even closer to their goal, Naruto notices something is off. He gets a strange feeling, as this is when the two and eight tails will begin attacking him. Killer B and Yugito both send Naruto flying as they chase after him, throwing punches that hit him hard. Naruto begins to regain focus, taking the full force of their attacks while healing after every hit. Suddenly, he catches each of their punches, asking if this is something they really wanted to do. Each of them said that it didn't have to be this way, but Naruto sighed, saying that this is the choice that they have forced him to make. As he then says that the system in place has caused too much pain and suffering, so I'll change the world myself. Before they could even react, Naruto had entered a perfect KCM state, sending each of them flying. First going for the eight tails and obliterating Killer B. You say you want change, but I think it was your village who killed some of the Hyuga and tried to capture some for your own. Or was it the cloud that tried to claim to be superior but never helped in any battle with the Akatsuki? You claim to be oh so high and mighty, so I'll knock all of you back down to where you belong. As Naruto gets ready to hit Killer B with the finishing move, the Raikage forces him to dodge and then. Naruto is surrounded. Naruto looks around him, at all of them, with pity. You know, this is a battle that I prepared for for too long. Actually, it seems that my whole life, every moment, every fight, every tear I've shed, and every friend I've lost, has led to this battle, and I don't plan to lose it all. And you know what? I don't need this. Naruto states he won't even use a Sharingan in this fight. He has something better in store for them. But first, Naruto then teleports behind Black Zetsu, who was so confused, not knowing if he could move or anything. But then, he was sealed instantly. With him gone, I'll end this and create a new world order. You ready to finally let loose, Kuruma? Naruto enters Kuruma Link Mode 
with the nine tails now appearing in its glowing like state and roaring for the battle to begin, the other Jinchiriki in the area would actually enter their own tail beast form. But Naruto wasn't done here. Instead, a silver like armor then appears around Kuruma, with two extra hands forming as well, as two blades would fill each side. But as this happens, Another purple Suzano would appear next to Kurama, as Sasuke had arrived thanks to his EMS. The battle would be magnificent, but a complete wash. With these two and wood release at their disposal, the remaining Jinchiriki would be killed, and those tail beasts would be set free. With the Raikage taking his final breath in this battle, Anoki would surrender as well. Naruto still had him banished from the stone, as well as his followers and advisors. With each Kage spot now open, a new Kage was selected and elected. And Naruto would be the sixth Okage of the Leaf Village, with Sasuke and Shikamaru as his advisors. A new age for Shinobi would begin here, where they would have peace in a sense, but there was still hatred for the Leaf and even Naruto, but there was nothing they could do about it. And with Naruto as the sixth Hokage of the Leaf, they expanded their control over different neighboring lands and also helped the Sand expand their own territory. As at first, no one liked him as a Kage, especially the others. But soon they saw how beneficial Naruto was. Naruto would be seen at his desk, asking Kurama if he wanted to be separate from him. But the beast snarled, saying he wished to stay with Naruto. He's pretty interesting. Naruto would also smile, looking up at the Hokage stone faces to see his own. Seems that I can finally rest, you know? This is when Shikamaru and Sasuke walk in with stacks of paper, claiming his break to be over. Naruto sighed, getting aggravated a little bit, but then continues his work, as this is where our story would end. If you made it to the end of the video, I just wanted to say thanks for watching as I really wanted to end this one a little different, as I think this version of Naruto would take a different route for his own story, his own destiny, due to his upbringing. As it's sort of a bittersweet ending, which I don't think I've ever done before. If you like this type of content and wish to see more stories just like this one, then like this video and consider subscribing to my channel, as this is Zero, and I'll catch you all on the next one.